Welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Rachel and in today's video I am going to be answering some of your questions that you've been asking in some of my other videos so let us well grab some snacks, tea, and I'd appreciate if you like this video before we get rolling. Now, if some of you guys are wondering where are these beautiful roses from, they're white roses, but they are spray paint a little bit purple. They are from my boyfriend. We just celebrated our three year anniversary a couple days ago. All right, so the first question I will be answering today is, should you have GitHub projects for somebody applying to a QA job? So for me, it doesn't matter what job you're going for as a developer but or engineer of course at the end of the day where are your projects do you only have github projects do you have maybe like projects on like a website you made no matter what source you have projects on i feel as though whatever projects are relevant to the job that you're applying to that's what you need to include for the most part if you don't have any relevant projects on your github for the particular QA job that you're applying to, then don't include it. But I feel as though you should include your GitHub just to show that you have work. Me personally, I do, but I know sometimes if you're not active on your GitHub, some recruiters tend to only look at your activity on GitHub, which is really unfortunate because I've seen some programs that you can use to edit um, your activity on GitHub so you can make it seem like you're on GitHub every single day even if you aren't so that's just kind of unfortunate kind of weed out applicants just judging people based off of their GitHub so for me it could be like a double-edged sword so at the end of the day do what you think is best but my real takeaway piece of advice for that is only really include the project if it's relevant meaning if it is relevant, um, if it includes like the software, like programming language that that company is using, like if your project's like Java and that company uses Java and you wrote test cases with that and you have it on your GitHub, I feel as though that's something you should include. Now, if you don't have any relevant projects, it depends. Now, if they really require GitHub, I don't know. That's a different story for a different day, so we'll just leave it at that for now. Now, the second question is for newcomers to QA, well, where do you start? So, I gotta be honest with you guys, I've only heard of the term quality assurance two years ago, 2018, 2017-ish, somewhere around there, 2017, 2018, that is the first time I have ever heard of quality assurance. So let me assure you that you are comfortable here. It's a safe zone, all right? If you've never heard of quality assurance or if you feel as though you're lost in the dark, trust me, I didn't hear about anything about quality assurance in my life until I was in my 20s, so don't feel bad. It's okay. It's a safe space. So now if you're trying to figure out, well, where do you begin with quality assurance, what interests you? Are you the type of person who has a programming background? Or are you the type of person who doesn't have a programming background? Now that is going to be like the big separation for you. And also it depends like what are your interests? Is programming something you're interested in? Or are you just focused on the quality assurance aspect? It really depends on your particular interest. I can't tell you how to live your life. So based on what you are interested in if you want to go for programming and if you want to learn how to use coding and quality assurance that's a great first step so after that once you decide that for yourself what programming languages are you interested in so if you are interested for like like an easy um point like easy programming languages to start out with when it comes to quality assurance Go for Python. Go ahead. Go for my course. It's already there on my uh, channel. It's linked to Udemy. And most of that stuff, the stuff that I had from my Python course when I went to Penn State. And mind you, 
the information that I'm giving you guys in that particular course has cost me over a thousand dollars. I'm giving you that information for free. So why not take advantage of it? I'm helping you. Why not help me out? Give me a good rating while you're at it too. I really appreciate that. It, it'll take like five seconds of your day. And I would really appreciate a really good rating if you could, because I'm not asking for your money. I'm just a, I'm just asking for a little appreciation, you know, like, hey, you know, thanks for putting this course together. That's all you gotta say. You know, that would just mean the world to me. But anyway, so besides Python, I was thinking about putting together um, an SQL course, if anybody's interested in that. That's another good programming language to start off with. Now, for those of you who do have um, a programming language, what what do you like? Do you want to become really good at programming? Do you want to become, I don't know, you want to be an expert at that? That's up to you. So, if for my intermediate people, I would recommend exploring, like, what interests you more? Are you the type of person who's going to learn more about Java, or do you want to learn more about C Sharp? Because when it comes to automation, those are two most popular languages in automation, but they are also more complicated and complex than Python and SQL. So listen, if that's something that you want to get into, that's on you, but that, that would be for like the intermediate programmers. Now if you're somebody that doesn't have any programming language and you're sitting here feeling really overwhelmed right now, it's okay. I didn't have programming language at one point in my life either, so listen, we're, we're all on the same point, we're just at a different part of our path right now. So, if you want to learn about quality assurance and you don't want to get into programming, that's okay. Now, that's going to hurt your chances, I gotta be honest, but there are ways to really emphasize and highlight your skills so what you really want to work on if that's the case you want to make sure that you're like really proficient in writing your test cases your documentation all that that is going to be like the main thing like you got to be like the best one on the team with documentation and all that if you want to do the manual stuff now if you never did quality assurance. I'm not saying you're going to be an expert off the rip. I'm not an expert and I have done quality assurance for some time. So don't feel overwhelmed. Just no, just, just tell yourself or just ask yourself, are you going to put in the effort? Is this something that you really want to do? Just make sure that that's something that you're interested in before you try to pursue something so that you're not like, overwhelmed or stressed out at the end of the day if that makes sense all right so for the last question that i will be taking in today's video is how long did you go to school for so i do have some of my college videos if you'd like i might leave a link in one of the top corners for you guys but what really um happened in my life is that i went to college for four years at penn state so I didn't have any programming experience before going to college, so everything that I learned about programming didn't happen until I stepped foot in college back in the fall of 2015. Wow, fall of 2015 is when I started college, and yeah, I went for all four years. Now, it really did, like, you can really become successful with or without school. I personally don't know anybody in the field that's a self-taught developer, but I do see a lot of people who are very successful on this platform that are self-taught developers, so it doesn't matter if you choose a self-taught route. There's actually somebody who's working the same position as me and they only went to a tech school, so there's a lot of different ways that you can become a quality assurance, but for me, I went to Penn State for four years and I did the IST program and that stands for Information Services and Technology. And me, I took the DevOps option because I wanted to do web application and iPhone development. So that's what interested me in the beginning of my college journey and then that's what I ended up graduating with. So. 
So these are all the questions that I will be answering for today's video. If you guys have any other topics that you'd like for me to address, please feel free to leave your comments down below in the comment section. And if you aren't already a part of the family yet, what are you doing? Smack that subscribe and bell notification button so that you never miss another post from me again. I'll see you next time.